Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. We're back with the Wood Elves, gonna be taking Orion against the Lizardmen. Let's get to the army compositions. I actually like Orion quite a bit in this matchup. He's unbreakable, has massive anti-large armor-piercing weapon strength, also has massive uh, weapon strength on his missile attack. A pretty decent range, relatively low armor and melee defense, but he does have great melee attack, and of course is unbreakable. We've also brought the Horn of Isha to make him a bit tankier, gives him that 44% damage resistance and healing when he gets below 20% HP, and we've cut the rest of his abilities just to make him as cheap as possible. In terms of the rest of the army here, we've got a Branch Wraith for magic, Penumbral Pendulum and Earthblood on this guy here. For infantry, we've got a front line of Eternal Guard with shields. Winterheart Guard are going to be anchoring the uh, right flank here. Two Sword Dancers, the Regiment of Renown Loex Tricksters Spear Dancers, as well as the uh, Wardens of Kithral Wide Wildwood Rangers. Such a mouthful. Uh, also, one Glade Guard with Starfire Shaft. And in Vanguard, we've got the Hawkeyes of Jakira, the Regiment of Renown Way Watchers, and one unit of Sisters of Thorn. For my opponent, he's gone with a very wide, kind of croc walker type build. Croc R on foot, supported by a unit of temple guards. He's got his king priest, Lord Beast, one unit of cold one spear riders, five Saurus warriors, two skink skirmishers, and three skink cohort with two Saurus spears. And that's pretty much it, so no dinos, mostly infantry, just one unit of cav. Let's see how they do. Uh, both of us have brought a pretty strong infantry force with relatively few kind of auxiliary skirmish or, you know, monstrous units or anything like that. So should be an interesting fight altogether to see how this goes. The uh, Sisters of Thorn going to come in here, pop that Shield of Thorns to give them extra missile resistance and to give them some extra weapon strength. They can come in, do some nice damage on a nice shock charge here to those King Cohort. Only took down about one unit model, but doing some really nice HP damage and some more missiles as they pull away there. And then we're going to hit this other unit of Skink Cohort, just kind of doing some harass here, some hit and run tactics with the Sisters of Thorn. Especially with that Shield of Thorns up, they're going to be very resistant to missile fire. They'll be able to get some good work done there. You, you can see about 25% HP and maybe six or so unit models dropping. Block of Doom coming from my opponent. And we are going to lose a few of the Sisters of Thorn there, although not too many, so it'll be pretty decent overall. Kind of pulling my opponent into my uh, my position here. If I can try and fight on this little slope, that will be ideal, but uh, we'll see. Let's see the Sisters of Thorn coming back for some more. Going to get a nice uh, uphill charge. Nope, sided against it. Going to be pulling back away there. And uh, they are getting some spear tosses as well. Doing some good damage. The Cold One Spear Rider is going to be following up making sure to push them off completely. Meanwhile, the main line of Saurus and Temple Guard still working their way forward. Big old blob of skinks right here. Unfortunately, I really don't have the magic to punish this, but this, the uh, Starfire Shafts are going to start opening up, picking off a few units from the periphery here. Not the most efficient use, use of ammunition, but I honestly don't have that many good targets to shoot at with the Starfire Shafts, so uh, anything that we can shoot at is going to be fine. Same thing with these Hawk Guys of Jakira. Not the best targets in the world, especially because all these Saurus have shields. So we're just going to do whatever we can, you know, shoot whatever targets uh, become available. Preferably high high value infantry if possible. But uh, yeah, you can see Orion also comes forward. Orion, of course, does cause terror as well. So he's going to be able to tear out away the skin cohort relatively shortly. We do drop a big old Curse of Rare. Slow down everyone in this pocket and allow the Sisters of Thorns to do a bit more work here. Uh, doing some really nice work actually routing off a couple units of Skinks. So already some of the chaff starting to be whittled away here. That's going to allow my elite elf infantry to just get straight into the source and start trading there. You can see we're starting to push forward to try and take the engagement out on the side here. Winterheart Guard going to not quite get a charge order on these Saurus, but it uh, looks like actually the Skink come in instead. Those Skinks are going to get beat by the Winterheart Guard, though it may take some time. Meanwhile, the, the uh, Hawkeyes unleashing some fire on those Saurus. War Dancers coming through as well. War Dancers will trade very effectively, at least the Sword Dancers, against the uh, Saurus here. The Regiment of Renown Spear Dancers also just have such good combat stats, especially with Orion in this pocket here. We're also going to drop an Overcast Penumbral Pendulum. It does a little bit of friendly fire to those War Dancers, but also does a ton of damage to the Lizardman Infantry here. You can see overall things are just not looking great. 
Lux Tricksters, again, they're not really meant as an anti-infantry type unit, but just due to their good combat stats, same things with the same thing with the Wardens of Kithrel here. Because of their great combat stats, they'll actually do quite well trading with the Saurus here. And uh, yeah, you wouldn't expect the Wood Elf Infantry to necessarily beat the Lizardmen Infantry, but that's more or less what's going to happen here, especially with the healing from the, uh, the uh, Branch Wraith there. Uh, Cold-Blooded being used on those Cold One Spear Riders to try and heal them back up, but as it is debuffing their speed, allowing my uh, Blade Guards to expend a bit more of their ammunition, I knew they were going to get compromised at this point. I didn't really have the uh, resources to protect, so I just decided instead to turn the attention of the Hawkeyes over onto the uh, Cold One Spear Riders, try and take them out that way, because the infantry fight is going pretty well in our favor. Uh, Orion pushed through in the back line, just routed off the Skink Priest here, uh, due to his terror, Krokar is going to come in, and I mean, obviously Krokar has uh, anti-large AP, but he actually is on his cold one here, which means he also counts as a large target. That being said, of course, Orion is a little bit out of position here, kind of isolated, but the uh, infantry fight is slowly being cleaned up in favor of the Wood Elves. So the Sisters of Thorn providing some nice buffs, coming back through, getting a good charge in here, and also dropping that Shield of Thorns, buffing up the weapon strength of all the units in this pocket. You can see the Wardens of Kithral also about to finish off these Saurus here, so yeah. Uh, the the Listman Infantry Force, which was quite large, just kind of walked into a little bit of a meat grinder there. And I definitely think that my opponent didn't quite have the right magic selection. Um, you know, Lore of Beasts can be okay. Flock of Doom is alright, but I, I think that in this particular matchup, you want to definitely bring Lore of Heavens instead. Curse the Midnight Wind, although Wood Elves tend to have low armor. Uh, if you happen to run into trees, it can be useful in that way. And also, the debuffed melee attack in and of itself is pretty useful. Wind Blast is also incredibly strong against uh, Wood Elf Infantry. He could have cleaned out a lot of my high value infantry with the Wind Blast, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, just not meant to be. And you can see the Lizardmen gonna get cleaned up at this point, and I do think this is one of the toughest matchups for the Lizardmen, um, just because, as you can see here, I mean, even going super wide on infantry can be rough. For the Lizardmen, they just uh, they tend to trade not super well against the Wood Elves. I'd be interested to see probably like a super heavy missile build, like a very heavy skirmish build from the Lizardmen would be the way to go in this particular matchup. But, uh, you know, Wild Riders, I don't think you'll see them super commonly. The Sisters of Thorn could potentially be a risk as well, but uh, well played to my opponent. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. In terms of the army breakdown there, you can see both the, the Sword Dancers came in and cleaned up a whole lot of kills. XP Chevrons all around. Uh, 90 and 107. The two, the three Regiment of Renown Spear units also did very well. The Winterheart Guard, Wardens of Kithral, and the uh, Lorex Tricksters all racking up quite a few kills. 126 on the Sisters of Thorn as well. Very useful for running down Skinks. And uh, because of their missile resistance and their physical resistance, they're pretty much ideal for running down Skinks. So uh, that in and of itself was pretty good for my opponent. It just kind of turned out pretty rough. He was able to do a lot of damage to Orion. But, uh, yeah, the, the overwhelming infantry horde, uh, unfortunately just kind of got stomped out by the, uh, the Wood Elves a little bit there. And, uh, the terror from Orion definitely helped in that aspect, terrifying away the various units of the Lizardmen. Fortunately, the Lizardmen didn't have any terror-causing units of their own, but, um... Yeah, I mean, uh, as far as this army goes, I honestly think it's probably not too bad. You might want to trade these Saurus Spears out for um, some more skirmish units, like get more Skink Skirmishers, some Chameleon Skinks as well. Uh, maybe upgrade the Skink Cohort to have Javelins, because the Javelins, if you can get a few good volleys on something like, say, these War Dancers, could pay for themselves in a big, big hurry. And then we already talked a bit about the magic, but let's just quickly go over... Uh, specifically what selection I would take in this particular matchup um, as the Lizardmen here. So assuming you're not bringing a Slon, which can be very risky, although Mazdamundi on his toilet seat regularly has 40%, you can get him up to 52% with the Sunburst standard of Hexwaddle. Still can be pretty risky, um, but if you're going with, uh, you know, more of a, a Krokar on foot, or even a Saurus Old Blood on foot, uh, bringing a Skink Priest lore of Heavens, I think, is going to be a bit better than Beasts in this particular matchup. So, in terms of spell selection, we'll cut Roiling Skies. It's useful, but not wildly useful. Uh, and we're just going to take Harmonic Convergence. That'll help buff up Skinks and other low-tier units to be able to trade very well against higher-tier uh, Wood Elf Infantry. Then, of course, the, the Wind Blast we talked about already. 
very good against low armor units, can really get some good damage done uh, against, you know, high value low armor units, which the Wood Elves, of course, tend to bring a lot of. Curse the Midnight Wind, again, the armor sundering isn't necessarily amazing here, but that area of effect minus 26 melee attack is pretty strong, a good 25 seconds and a pretty large area of effect. Um, that in and of itself is pretty nice, and if your opponent happens to bring trees, then that also can help take away their armor as well. So something like that. And then maybe you grab the Source Warriors with shields. Um, maybe you also grab some Skin Cohort with Javelins. Then maybe some Chameleon Skinks as well. And uh, Pterodon Riders might be a little bit risky, but we'll also get some Skink Skirmishers just to really go heavy on the missiles here. And then, uh, yeah, maybe even grab a Skink Chief as well. Just leave him on foot for the additional er uh, Cold-Blooded and so that he can kind of shoot at whatever. And then, uh, yeah, at this point you can maybe grab the Temple Guard or some other infantry, you know, whatever you think would work. But something like this I think could be pretty decent. Laser Lizards can be okay, although they are somewhat vulnerable to the armor-piercing missiles of the... Uh, the wood elves so bear that in mind but they definitely can be useful certainly in blasting out some uh, high value infantry but let me know what your guys thoughts in the comments down below uh what kind of build would you take as lizardmen against the wood elves hope you guys enjoyed watching if you do like this sort of content be sure to like subscribe hit that bell notification button so every time i upload a new video you'll be notified thanks again for watching we'll see you next time